Commissioner Hughes. Here, Muskegon Township, Michigan. Commissioner Learing. Here, the Hall of Justice. Commissioner Nash. Here, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Commissioner Pago. Here, Norton Shores. Chairman Skolnick. Here, City of Norton Shores. Did Commissioner Wilkins make it on? I don't see her. So we'll excuse her, Commissioner Brown. Uh, I don't, I'm here, uh, City of Muskegon. Commissioner Wilkins is not, not here. We're trying to reach her. We'll excuse her for now. Uh, Real Steve, do you know that uh, we are on a call? No, I mean, uh... hey. at this, um, it's for a couple years until we're in move. position. Um, just, it's just trying to work through it, and it's, it's a way different scale than we're used to, and just. Okay, moving a lot of, right along, I'd like to get approval of the agenda. Um, and so, we would so, need a, a motion and we have a support. Is that correct? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Support. Thank you. That was Mr. Commissioner Skolnick and uh, Marsha. Commissioner okay. Hughes. Okay. Oh, Hughes, thank you. Uh, do we need to do a roll call on that or not? We don't. Uh, Krista, do we need a roll call for, for I that? I can do a roll Just call. Approval. Okay. Okay, thank you. But what is the roll call on? I was talking about approval of the agenda. Approving the oh, agenda. Yeah. yeah. Commissioner yes. Hughes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Leary? No. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Commissioner Pago? Yes. Chairman Skolnick? Yes. Commissioner Sear? Yes. And Commissioner Brown? Yes. So thank you very much. So we have approval of the agenda and item number four is a public hearing for Muskegon County's consideration to apply for the Michigan Natural Resources Trust Fund grant to acquire phase two north property of Nugent Sand, Sands 377 acres of potential parkland. I make a motion what? to open the public hearing. The agenda. Oh. Yes, the agenda. I, open, uh, I feel thanks. like a boomer. I can't change my name. Oh. But it's just the chamber, so it's fine. Okay. I'm going to interrupt for a second. For those who are on, you mute unless you need to speak. Thank you. Okay. So um, at this point, we're going to open it up to any other to public comments number five do we have any um, public comment yes we didn't correct. have a second on the opening oh we i'm sorry Commissioner Hughes made the motion and she got interrupted and we need a so we have a motion and we need a second is that correct so yes okay do we have a second but marcia is raising her hand okay hang on a second i'm sorry Okay, so four is we will need a motion uh, for the public hearing, and so I'd need a roll call vote for item number four. So, yes, the roll call vote to open the public hearing. Commissioner yes. Hughes. Commissioner yes. Hughes, thank you. Yes. Commissioner Leary. Oh uh, yeah. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Pago. Pago. Yes. Chairman Skolnick? Yes. Commissioner Sear? Yes. Commissioner Hovey Wright? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. So we are going to open it up to public comment is the next phase on the agenda. And at the public comment, uh, persons may address the commission during the time set aside for public comment, which is starting now and at any time by suspensions of rules all persons must address the commission and state their name for the record common smell will be limited or shall be limited to two minutes for each participant unless time is extended 
prior to the public comment period by a vote of the majority of the commission. So at this point, we're, we would uh, entertain any public comment. And we do have a hand raised, so. So the first one is Aaron. Yes, this is Aaron Fod Mast, resident of City of Muskegon, 3050 West Sherman Boulevard. Um, I'm also a park planner at Ottawa County Parks, um, and I've been an uh, employee at Ottawa County for over uh, almost 20 years. Um, I have had the opportunity to walk the site. It's a, you know, a tremendous site and a uh, um, tremendous opportunity. I, it's when I think about it and having seen this kind of project all over the country, it's the kind of project that is once in a lifetime uh, project once in a generation that can be a turning point for a community. Um, so I think the fortune of getting the first grant recommended, you know, there's a long way to go on that, but that's, um, you know, a, a great um, milestone. And then moving forward with this grant, I think the North Park property is essential to complete the park. I think the plan to keep the South property uh, mostly undeveloped is perfect. And I think having walked the uh, under you know the former sand mining site behind cannon that um, really is a very tough spot to do anything natural and it really is a great opportunity for um, uh, some kind of camping facility there and I think it would be a tremendous resource a tre tremendous economic driver you know these kind of projects drive millions in investment in the surrounding community community in some places like at the High Line in New York City billions in uh, tourism investment in real estate uh, values. So um, for any concern about this being a negative on the county's budget or cost, um, I think the long-term economic benefits would far exceed that. And um, it's the kind of economic, to, I would consider it an economic opportunity equal to like a major factory being located in Muskegon County. Yeah. And it's not just a park project, it's a, it's an economic development project. And Aaron, thank, thank you very much for your comments. We do truly appreciate that. So we have uh, three more uh, hands raised, so. Ken, Ken Mahoney, please. Mr. Mahoney. He's muted. Could you unmute him if he's not been unmuted yet? Thank you, Mark. He should have a little window on his screen that's asking him to unmute himself. Oh, I'll come back to Ken Mahoney. The next one is Eric right. Seifert. Thank you. <laughs> Greetings, uh, Eric Seifert, 297 West Clay in lovely downtown Muskegon. Um, I've been a lifelong uh, citizen of the area other than stints in Grand Haven and a couple of years in uh, Ann Arbor. I returned to Muskegon from Ann Arbor, primarily because of the lake and, and the um, environment here. Um, I grew up just south of the uh, property about a quarter mile. Um, and uh, I don't want to tell you how much time I spent in that property illegally uh, traversing and whatnot, but um, I, I firmly believe that we need to gain control of the property to prevent uh, other development. It's an absolute gem. It's a once in a lifetime uh, opportunity for property of this size and location. Um, I've offered before to um, assist with fundraising. I helped form the Save the Catwalk fundraiser in Grand Haven. We raised $1.5 million for that project. I think we can get some significant participation from the citizens of the area, but I'm absolutely passionate that we um, purchase that property and maintain control. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> we'll go back to Ken Mahoney. Can you? Uh, yeah, I think I'm you? set now. Thank can you. you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. 
just as a uh, historical perspective, Muskegon County has always taken an opportunity for natural parkland. Uh, it's an opportunity here as the previous uh, comment was, it's an economic driver. We're switching from a mechan uh, industrial base into more tourism and visitation stuff. We need this to drive the economy at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mahoney. We have a Next. couple more hands uh, raised. Next is Pete Bosha. Hi, Pete Boscheff. Um, I'm a resident of Fruitport Village in uh, in uh, the district that Mr. Laring represents. And um, I um, strongly uh, favor and support the uh, application for the Michigan Natural Resources Trust Fund grant to acquire this uh, property for phase two. It is an opportunity that transcends almost everything you could ever imagine in any, part, any other part of the country to um, have that shoreline um, in this amazing place to uh, go into the public trust with those funds that come from um, various uh, revenue sources that um, um, are there for this particular project, this kind of acquisition. And uh, those of you who know about uh, recent contribution to uh, the village of Fruitport Pomona Park for, by an anonymous benefactor who helped purchase or did purchase 2.5 acres for Pomona Park, and I understand it's just under a million dollars. That property has just two and a half acres has had a major impact on uh, Pomona. Um, I used to sit on a Fruitport Village Council. We worked hard on that five-year plan to include that uh, land acquisition component. So um, this is a great thing. I think uh, everyone I know supports it in this district and um, it will serve out county tourism. It'll do a tremendous amount. And some of these things are unquantifiable in terms of the positive visitability impact and that to this community. So thank I'm you. Hoping... Thank you, sir. Roger Morgenstern, please. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Eisenbarth and uh, county commissioners. My name is Roger Morgenstern. I live at 4881 Yorkshire Drive in the great city of Norton Shores, uh, the same city where this property is located in. I just wanted to add my support, not only as a resident, but also a council member of Norton Shores uh, in support of this phase two uh, application. I know the county uh, scored very well on a successful phase one application. And I can uh, only believe that you will do just as well in phase two. This is a great gem and uh, the city of Norton Shores uh, City Council has gone on record as being supportive of this project. And we greatly appreciate the work of the county to uh, work on this uh, for the betterment of all of our citizens. As many have said, this will be a great economic driver and an excellent addition to um, uh, natural features of our county. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next is Ashley Bodon. Ashley Podine, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, my name is Ashley Podine and I am a resident of Fruitport Township. Um, and I just wanted to share my support for the acquisition of the second phase of the Nugent Sand property. Um, I think that this is an opportunity for Muskegon County that will pay off well into the future and while investing um, some money at some point um, will be necessary. It's also necessary to put something into a project such as this to get benefit out of it. Um, I am raising two children in this county and I really would like for them to have a great space for recreation. And I think that this is an opportunity for us to offer that. Um, and that is all I have to say. Thank you very much. Mark, we have someone else. Um, we, we have one person, WNEAC admin. That is me. Um, and I apologize that I was not able to rename it. That stands for WEMIAC, West Michigan Environmental Action, Action Council. I'm Andy Kabbalah, and I work for WEMIAC. And I'm a lifelong Muskegon County resident. And actually, um, 
testified, my first official duty for West Michigan Environmental Action Council last year was testifying in support of phase one of this project. I've been an environmental activist for years, city council member, teacher, I live in Whitehall, and I've done quite a bit of work on our coastal sand dune systems, and in particular in mining. And typically what happens with a mining site is it becomes a place for development. And so I'm very excited to see that um, the county is interested in acquiring this. It does have intact critical dunes, which um, are fragile and sensitive and should not be um, uh, degraded. Um, part of the work that I've done is looking at our coastal dune system and, and realizing that we probably need to acquire as many of these parcels as we can because that's, that's one of the best ways to protect them. Um, so they're an increasingly rare commodity um, and opportunities may not be available in the future to um, if we pass this one up. Uh, the public benefits are huge. Um, and not only is it a, it's a quality of life issue for local residents, but it's an incredible draw to people and to businesses who want to find places to locate where um, workers want to live. You know? So it's an increased regional tax base, a tourist and a quality of life draw. Um, I was ecstatic to see uh, that the county was interested in this and I support it 100% as a private citizen and also offer um, official support from the West Michigan Environmental Action Council. Thank you. Thank you very much. Paula, could you repeat your last name for our records? We had anybody else, Mark? No, that was our Anya last. Cabala, C-A-B-A-L-A, -A -A, I think. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. So we have one more just raise their hand. It is Charles Richard. Hey, okay? Yes, sir. Hi, Chuck Richard. Hey, I'm a, a former city commissioner, of city of Muskegon, as well as a former city councilman at uh, Norton Shores. Lived in uh, Norton Shores for 25 years. On on the hand, one hand, I think you you're right on the project in terms of of, of the beauty of the of the uh, of the of the land. On the other hand, though, I, I question your your stats, and I question them because I hear all all the dollars it brings in. What more? I mean, I look at it from the private side and say, if you want me to return back to a community where I grew up in, you got to make it a place to to do so. Okay, I currently live in in Hart. Okay, I moved away for a lot of reasons, but. When I look at this project, what it, what its potential is, it, it's a beautiful piece of land for, for bringing back people of a high caliber back to your community. You're saying about, about tourism, show me the dollars that, that tourism brings in versus the people that would live there and the type of value that they bring. And value in many ways, philanthropic value, um, just so many more things. Uh, and you're using taxpayer money at a time when businesses are closing you want to use you want to use dollars that for this to build the buy the land i i honor that to some degree but we've got parkland right now we can't even take care of and who's paying for that you know you can say well i live out of the community well no i don't i'm in the community every day i'm in north shores i'm in muskegon i'm all over the place every day so i do appreciate beauty and that but there is a limit to how much we need to spend. If you don't believe that, take a look at the Manistee National Forest on the national level, and it's such a vast array. How much land is enough? And, I, and I'll leave it at that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Mark, Next we have, one on the uh, list is Andrea We have another Rigger. hand. Yeah, Andrea, Andrea Riggler. Andrea Riggler, and I live in Muskegon, and I work for the Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, I live and work in Muskegon, and uh, I just wanted to uh, kind of comment on the last person's um, comment, um, just by saying that there, there are tens of, there are, there are at least 10 studies right now of economic tourism um, dollars, sustainability, um, tourism, and this is like a, this is a perfect, opportunity for that kind of a thing. Um, all around the region, there are 
studies that have been done showing the impact that places like this have on the economy. So, um, you know, on the opposite side of that, uh, the person was commenting on private development and, um, you know, once we do that to this kind of a property, you can't really go back. So I guess I just want to point that out that um, there is information out there about, about the impact of these type of properties um, all over the place in, the, in Michigan. So yeah. just my comment, I'm in full support of uh, the county purchasing this and I think it would be really wonderful for our community and very um, just a, an opportunity that doesn't come up very often. So thank you. And thank you very much. Appreciate your comment. Uh, there's a Jack, Mr. Jack Page. Page. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, my comment is I am in, I'm fully in support of uh, the county taking on and, and requesting the second phase of this park. Uh, and I wanted to tag along a little bit on the last couple of comments uh, on public versus private development. Well, first of all, I, I you know, there, I believe that the best use of this land would be in the public trust. And as far as private development goes, I think that ship has sailed. I mean, there's already been two to three different uh, swings at private development and residential development there that haven't panned out. So I fully support this and I would like to see it move ahead. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, Next, Michael Ramsey. Michael, yes. Good afternoon and thanks for having me. My name is Michael Ramsey. I live in the city of Muskegon and I'm a commissioner for Ward 3. I just wanted to uh, chime in and say how excited that we are uh, in Muskegon to see this opportunity and the, uh, the county really taking it uh, to the next step so that we can continue to, to provide be beautiful options for both our neighbors and our visitors uh, to keep them coming back to our wonderful lakeshore and to experience all that we have to offer in the city and county of Muskegon. So thank you guys so much for, for all. Thank you very much. Can we? Uh... Next is Christine Robillard. Mm -hmm. Hi, Commissioners. I'm Christine Robert, and I live at 2291 Norcrest in Norton Shores, um, a neighbor to the property. Um, and I, I would just, uh, I, I was just thrilled to see that the Shannonettes and Nugent Sand were um, donating this property to um, for public use. Um, it's a beautiful piece of property, and and as has been said previously, several attempts have been made to develop it and it hasn't happened. Um, and so it may be that it's just a perfect property property for the community. I watch as the, you know, the community uses um, the woods around the other side of the property. And it, you know, this is also attached to Cruzy Park. Um, so it's just a nice um, opportunity to um, expand the use for the public. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christine. Appreciate your comments. Uh, I think we're going to close off at this time. It doesn't see any more hands um, for public comment. And uh, I will then need to move to fi any fi number item number six, final board comments of the agenda today. So is there any, any final board, uh, Marsha? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Richard uh, commented that uh, he didn't want taxpayer money uh, used for this. And actually it's not. Um, the, uh, th for the acquisition. Uh, the money from the uh, uh, trust fund at the state level is from oil and gas money. It is not uh, government money in any way. Um, the, the total cost of acquisition will be done by the donations from Mr. Shandonet, the owner, uh, from the Land Conservancy and then uh, uh, the grant uh, from the state. In, the, in terms of the development of the property, we have um, allocated some of our park money to help with the development, but we're also going to be raising private dollars for the development, uh, which will be minimal because we're gonna try and keep it as natural as possible. So um, I hope that uh, addresses your concern. Thank you. Do we have any other final board comments at this point? Mr. Chair, I, I would like to make a comment if I may. Yes, sir, Commissioner Loring. Yeah, so the idea that grant money from the state government is not tax dollars is absurd. 
uh, that all grants, whether they're coming uh, from the federal government or state government or even local grants that are written, our tax dollars, uh, money is fungible. It can be transferred. I'm speaking, you can have your minute later. Uh, the second point is uh, Cruzy Park was brought up. I don't know if anybody has been to Cruzy Park, but if you want to see how government runs uh, parks, go out there and take a look at the dilapidated collapsed boardwalks and the efforts they've made to make it barrier free. The parking lot's a mess. The pavilions uh, ha are in disarray. The the walks up the dunes are falling apart. Uh, we can't maintain the parks that we currently have. I brought up Patterson Park a number of years ago, or last year when this whole thing came up with the broken glass. Thank you, Bob Lukens, for sending somebody out there to board up the boarded up window that had fallen apart. But the gates don't even work at Patterson Park. The other parks are in disarray. We can't manage what we have. I don't see why we would would spend tax dollars on buying a piece of property that we're obviously not going to be maintaining. I would much rather see a Bay Harbor move into Muskegon than another county owned park. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have any other board uh, comments, final comments at this point? Okay. Seeing none, I will need a motion to adjourn from the special community development strategic plan, uh, public comment part of our meeting today. The motion to. So moved. So we have support and. Mr. Did we Mr. Catch Chair. That? Yes. Uh, did we make a motion to close the public hearing? Yeah, I'll make a motion to close the final board comments and I need a motion and support to adjourn at this point. Wait, wait a second. You made a good point that we need to close the public hearing for record. Oh, okay. I'll make a motion to close motion. the public hearing. Cool. Thank you very much. Right, and we have a second. Um, do we need a roll call for that? Probably at this point would be good to do so. Yes. Mr. Lehring? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Pego? Yes. Commissioner Chairman Skolnick? Sorry, yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Steer? Yes. Commissioner Hovey Wright? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. And Commissioner Brown? Yes. So now I can ask for a motion to adjourn because we went through final board comments. Is that correct? Yes. yes. So moved. Okay. So we have support and we have a second. So thank you very much. And uh, we're at 359. We have one minute.